Hello everyone, welcome to Weapons We Don't Want to See in Battlefield 6. I'm Late Rage, and stick around because I'm sure I've got something to offend everyone. Let's get stuck in. The first weapon we don't want to see in Battlefield 6 is not just a weapon, it's a whole class of weapons, and a whole class of scumbaggery. It is of course for self-loading rifles, the two-tap terrors. With these guns, it doesn't matter how crap you are at Battlefield, because you only need two body shots to take down an enemy, and the recoil is all vertical, which means these weapons are probably your grandma's best shot at actually getting a kill in Battlefield 6. In fact, it's so bad she'll probably drop a 50. And now you can also add the M1 Grand into this category. Why? Because if you're a low-level player, you get insane aim assist, as well as insane zoom snap. Pretty much, you don't have to aim. Next up, we have a personal favourite of mine. And not just me, but there are so many pilots that seem to love this weapon, and I don't really understand why. Actually, I do understand, because it's completely broken, completely overpowered, and utterly ridiculous. I'm talking, of course, about the Mosquito. This vehicle is probably unique in that it has the lowest skill ceiling that I've ever seen in any game. You get a 4,000 pound bomb, which will one hit a tank, one hit a heavy tank, I should say, without a direct hit, as well as kill all infantry around it, and not only that, it has a six pounder gun, which is why I hate the users of this plane so much, I wish personal harm and misery upon them. Now, next up on this list are, of course, tinnies, or small boats if you're not an Aussie. Um, let's just say that they're pretty weak and terrible. Let's just leave it there. Moving on, we have another vehicle with a very low skill ceiling. A vehicle with incredible firepower, great concealment, it can literally just destroy anything in its path. I'm talking, of course, about the Harchi tank. Jump into any Pacific breakthrough map and you're likely to find one within 30 metres of a resupply crate. Because with this tank, all you have to do is simply fire off your rockets in the vague direction of where the enemy is, get your 10 kills, and then return to the resupply when you've run out of rockets. And trade to popular belief, this tank also has a main gun, which is incredibly effective at taking down both tanks and infantry. Now, you might be thinking, yes, the Americans, they've got a rocket tank too. However, their rocket tank is the size of an apartment block, and is often betrayed by its giant rocket array sticking up above the turret. Therefore, you can see this thing coming and easily neutralise it, because it is, after all, just a shitty Sherman. Moving along now, the next thing I'd like to feature in this is a whole category of weapons whose defensive strengths are beyond dispute and whose only downside requires you to go prone or head glitch on some ledge somewhere. I am talking of course about the MMGs which have been modelled in this game as they were in World War II, completely OP and absolutely infuriating if you have to attack anything. Normally it wouldn't be too bad, but with Battlefield 5's horrible visibility issues, you often can't see where they are. All of a sudden, you'll just be walking along and the rocks will just open up on you. Every rock, every tree, even the windows will start shooting at you. And it's not inanimate objects, this isn't prop hunt, it's just as a whole heap of MGs that you can't see there because of your high field of view and because you like to push things aggressively, like you wish everyone else would. These players that use these weapons often just sit back, camp all day, and post pictures of their 60 and 4 gameplay, which of course is completely irrelevant because they're just camping back doing absolutely nothing. Get rid of them, and please, if you're the one who thought of these, this class of weapons, what are you doing in game design? Obviously you're a good historian, maybe you should focus on that. Stop introducing historical accuracy into this game because you just killed all the goddamn gameplay because no one can move because there's MG42s camping every angle. Please, have a think of it about it. Now, your average observer might be thinking that I'm running out of things to cover since I've already pretty much named and shamed half of the weapons and vehicles in Battlefield 6, but you're wrong. Imagine a plane that was actually a tank and actually could spot a whole map. Introducing the tank plane, the JU-88, one of the easiest planes to use. Trust me, I'm the worst pilot around, and even I can get 30 and 0 kills in this beast. To use this machine, it's a relatively easy three-step process. Step 1. 
fly high up into the sky. Use your spotting camera to spot every single member of the enemy team on the map. Step 2. Have a look at that map. Look for group targets that are easy to kill, or tanks, or anything really. If you find a group of 4 infantry all clustered around, go for a dive on them. And finally, step 3. Boom, boom, boom. Just RT, RT until that group of infantry is dead. Then just repeat the process. It really is as easy as that. And this is coming from someone whose primary opponent in the air is, seems to be mountains because I've died to them more than any enemy action. And considering that I'm calling a tank plane, let's just have a look at that uh, main gun it's got there. It seems to have the blast damage radius of a Tiger's 88mm with the reload speed of a Valentine 2 pounder. Hmm, and someone at DOS really does seem to love planes because that is completely bullshit and why the f it's in this game I have no earthly idea. Hmm, damn, starting to run out of things to just talk shit about. Oh no, that's right, shotguns! Yay! Every bot's best friend, let's have a look at them. It was these disgusting weapons that caused me after one match on Underground and after being killed by a Kiwi player a few too many times by one to advocate the use of Australia's vast natural uranium reserves to mass produce gun type atomic weapons which would then proceeded to be used to carpet bomb the entire New Zealand islands into nothing more than radioactive glass. I was so angry that I didn't even care that Nitrous and a few of the other boys from Deathwish lived in New Zealand, they were just collateral in a war for greater good. Now I understand balancing shotguns isn't easy, just need to look at Warzone for that. They had the horrible Origin 12 meta where people were winning Warzone matches with pickup weapons, which was then shortly followed by the horrible R90 Dragon's Breath meta where everyone was just being too tapped into oblivion. Dice obviously admiring the way they'd been modelled in modern warfare seek to do the same and introduced an automatic shotgun of their own. Because shotguns are so difficult to use for new players, well, aim assist auto rotation was also shortly added thereafter and increased to ridiculous levels for new players. This made a low skill weapon even less skilled to use and devastatingly effective with a 12 meter maximum one hit kill range. And the thing you got to remember, while that is the maximum range, a lot of the time players aren't always on full health, especially aggressive players who are constantly in gunfights. Their health is usually around 70 to 80 because they're constantly healing. And that means the one hit kill radius goes out further and rage and frustration ensures. The way shotguns are balanced now is similar to the DMR rifles. It's been balanced the wrong way. They need less lethality and longer range, whereas the DMRs need less lethality and more horizontal recoil. Now that shotguns are out of the way, there is one more point I want to touch on. Developers at DICE seem to, for some reason, think that spawn was an objective that needed to be defended. In order to accomplish this mission, most maps, as you'll see, in particular at Narvik and Operation Underground, the spawn deployment area is furnished with a vast array of stationary weapons. Oh, I sort of forgot Rotterdam too, from the British side. Now, if one finds themselves on the German side, Narvik, they can go on the coastal side for a nice little stroll, where they'll find a nice anti-tank gun, with excellent million dollar views all the way into enemy deployment. On Rotterdam, there's similar mounted anti-tank guns, which fire onto the Alpha objective. These weapons are so effective that Angry Man has actually left his apartments from the back of Charlie in order to relocate onto that gun, where he just spam fires the entire match onto Alpha regardless of whether there are any enemies present on the objective. Now it strikes me as weird that no one at DICE thought that this would encourage people camping in their deployment. I don't understand the rationale behind it, but anyway, it's not something we want to see in Battlefield 6. We want people pushing. There's too much camping going on as it is. One final note, bayonet charges. Silent bayonet charges. On your screen when you're bayonet charging, your character shouts Aah! as he rushes, rushes towards the enemy. But if you're on the receiving end of that, this is what you hear. Uh, cricket sounds put in. And absolutely nothing. And because of the netcode issues, the player seems to teleport fast dif distances into your chest. Not very pleasant. 
please, please fix it because it is so infuriating. It's beyond words. Yeah, if you thought this was the end of it, you're wrong. I've got a list 100 pages long. Mate, I could sit here all day and whinge to you about the weapons of Battlefield 5. But there is one last weapon, which I will say, it's not here because it's overpowered. It's here because it's absolutely freaking useless and a complete disgrace in so many ways. I talk, of course, about the shitty Sherman tank, otherwise known as the Tommy Cooker. Despite all its obvious flaws, I'll just sum it up by the two main things that really let this tank tank down. That is, the physics model. For some reason, the tank feels like it's made out of paper. The slightest explosion will just blow it sideways. Yet, despite all this, when you try and climb a hill with one, even with the engine upgrade, the thing struggles like an old clapped out car. I just don't understand how it's so bad. The second, of course, is a 76mm gun upgrade, which, back in real life, was actually a quite an effective Tiger Killer and could penetrate the front armour with ease at fairly decent range. Yet, in Battlefield 5, for some reason, they went with a heat shell instead of an AP shell, which means, due to the terrible drag, the thing can only be used at close range. And when you're facing uh, AP shells from Tigers and Panzer IVs, it means you can easily be picked off at range, especially considering how goddamn large the tank is. It just shows really how badly balanced some things in Battlefield 5 are, and they don't need to be like that. What I hope DICE does is go back to what they used to do, start playing the game in public servers. That way, you make a modification to a vehicle or weapon, you play with that in a public server, and you can see exactly how it performs. Anyway, I better shut up. I'll stop reading that stupid list, because otherwise this video may as well become a goddamn podcast. Thanks for watching, if you're still awake, that is. And I hope to see you all soon, in the next video. Take care, my friends.